Hey, welcome back to Rates of Change Part 2. So in this video, we will be working with a nice example where the function formula is given. So we don't have to fit the data into this equation. The equation is provided already. So the function that we will be working with now is x squared minus 4 and the point at which the rate needs to be calculated is given as a value x is equal to 1. So this is nothing else but the application for those who take calculus course of the limit of function when uh, we need to find the slope of the tangent at the specific point. So this is one thing. Also, the rate of change is nothing else but finding the ratio between the difference in y values divided by the difference in x value. So this is delta y divided by delta x. So when it comes to the average uh, rate of change definition, you would find the slope of the secant, let's say on this graph between point P and point Q, or point P and point R. So secant is a line that cuts a graph at two distinct points. If you're working with instantaneous rate of change, we'll find the slope of the tangent through that fixed point. In this case, on our diagram, we'll use point P as the fixed point. X2 is less than x and less than x1. So this is why you see on the graph that when you fix location of point x, x2 is to the left with respect to point x. And x2 is defined as x minus h. So h represents a small increment, a small value that is either subtract or add it to value of x. So this is why x1 is represented by x plus h value. So now we have three distinct points, x2, x, and x1. For each point, for each value of x rather, there is distinct value of y and that value of y is determined uh, by the formula of the function, x squared minus 4. So this quotient here, on the left side, versus that quotient would lead to the same result. Why is that? We are working with following interval here on the left, or we are following it with we are working with rather preceding intervals and we get the same conclusion. I want you to look at the graph. Between P and Q secant and secant P and R, there is only one tangent at point P. So point Q is getting closer and closer and closer to point P. So does point R. And then eventually they would collide with point P to form one straight line that makes contact with the curve. And that line is called the tangent line. So regardless of from which side you will start the calculation of the slope of the tangent, you will get to the same result. So first, arbitrarily decision that each value is 1. So whether you will use the left-hand side interval or right-hand side interval, we get the same result. So why do you see, for example, f of x plus 1 minus f of x? Because h is now 1. So in your formula, where you used to see h, now you see 1. So f of x plus 1 is determined by the formula of the function x squared minus 4. So this is why you get this statement here. And minus f of x, of course, this is the formula for f of x. And then you expand it by using binomial 
theorem for squaring uh, x plus 1 or just simply f do the FOIL. Doesn't matter, you will always get there. So this is why you have x squared and the expansion to x squared plus 1 then minus x squared. Just pay attention, you take away negative 4, so plus 4. In the end you see that constant negative 4 and positive 4 are gone. And what you have also that x squared term and negative x squared term is gone. So in the end you have 2x plus 1 divided by 1. Okay. If you were to follow with this left hand sided interval, the procedure is exactly the same. It's just slight different values, different signs, I should say, because the bottom now is negative h, and in the end, it leads to the same result, because x squared and negative x squared is gone, negative 4 and positive 4 is gone, so you have minus 2x, minus 1. Okay, you would have minus 2x plus 1 divided by negative 1, so in the end, this negative sign gets here, so you convert this to positive 2x minus 1 divided by 1. So this is why, in the end, you see the same result no matter which approach you will take. So this is for the value when h is equal to 1. So the following step will be to select smaller and smaller value of h and see what result will be given by doing that. Okay, so now h is equal to 1 over 2. So the first value was 1. Now h is smaller. So what that means, you need to see that this point q went closer to point P, so that point R moved closer to point P, because that the difference between X and subtracting 1 shrank to from X to take away, let's say, negative 1 over 2. So you would be maybe somewhere here. So the tangent now, the slope of the secant would not be equal to the previous slope of PR will be sort of PR1. Supposedly, if this is the new location for point R, it's called R1, so that the second slope will change its direction. And that will be valid also for secant PQ, where point Q gets closer to point P. So this is what we will examine now what is the value of the slope when h is equal to 1 over 2? Start with the same question, the same definition. Difference in y values divided by difference in x. So this is why we have the following stages right here. So in the end, what you see is that x plus 1 over 4 divided by 1, 1 over 2. So what is the value of that ratio? How would you know? Well, since x is equal to 1, the next and the last step in this uh, line here would be replace x with 1 plus 1 over 4 and divided by 1 over 2. Okay. So what do you think the value of that ratio is now? Well, you divide 1 and a quarter divided by half. So the slope ratio should be 2.5. M is equal 2.5. If you were to use this approach from the left hand side, let's say this was for point R, this is for point P, you do follow the same steps. So you start with delta y divided by delta x. You have to carefully expand the binomial. You have to carefully watch for that negative sign when you do the distributive property. This is why you get plus 4 here. This is why you get negative x squared. So in the process you'll see that 
oh, x squared is always canceling each other out. Yes. And then you see that positive constant values are also get canceled. Yes. You divide it by negative 1 over 2. So initially you would see negative x plus 1 over 4 by negative 2. But if you bring this negative up to the top, then this is why this disappears and you have x minus 1 over 4 divided by 1 over 2. So what is the value of that ratio? Well, x is 1 minus 1 over 4 and you divide it by 1 over 2. Okay, so let's divide and find a value for that. So now this value of m is 1.5 so m is equal to 1.5 and when you find the average between this and that value the average is 2 so the rate of change at 1 is equal to 2 a unit would be nice to have so let's say that this is the displacement function and the time measured is in seconds so the rate of change at, two, at 1 the rate of change at 1 is equivalent to 1 meter per second. This is really where that application makes much more sense when we have a unit defined, not just pure mathematical example. Okay, so now we're going to find the value of, uh, of each ratio when h is equal to smaller number than 1 over 2. 0 0.1, it's the next step. Well, now h is very, very small, relatively small. It's not really that small. So h is 0 0.1, and we will use the same approach. We still use the same function formula. So by substitution and evaluation, you get to this point here. Similarly with this interval. So you will get one value on the left hand side, the value of the slope. We get the second value here. So let's call it M1 and M2. But when you do add M1 and M2, and you find the different, I'm sorry, the average between these two, you always will be getting two. So this is very interesting. So we know that the rate of change when x is equal to 1 is always 2 and that makes sense for those of you who would take or are taking calculus uh, course you will see that by finding the first derivative of this function and plugging 1 for x you get 2 so one more step when x, so when h value is smaller. So now we will summarize and generalize this. We have our formula provided in the beginning x squared minus 4. The challenge was to find the rate of change when x is equal to 1. So if you just kept one interval where what it's preceding or following interval doesn't matter and then you define the ratio difference between y values divided by difference between x values and in the process you plug in the formula function and start working this through you will get a ratio that has the following shape the denominator is always h and when you divide by h, what you will get a ratio that defines an expression over 1. So in other words, you just have a formula. And we know now what we were doing that h was equal to 1, then 1 over 2, 
then 0 0.1 and then you can continue with this and uh, your conclusion will be what if h was 0? what if h was very close to 0? so that point Q or point R would be very close or coinciding even with point P so if that was the case then this expression here would be independent of h and will be just 2x so this is the leading step towards derivatives although we started with rates of change concept so this is something that you should be aware of where you finding the formula using general quotient difference you find a formula and when you realize that h is approaching to zero so that h factor disappears so you get a new formula and now when x is equal to one yes the value of the slope is two if you want to find a tangent at different location let's say x is equal to three you would know without further calculation that m the slope value at three will be just two times three which is equal to six so this is something for you to be aware of when working with rates of change further application that we'll do is real life application with a given formula so that's the video part number three I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please post any comments or questions down below and let me know what do you think or whether there is something that was not clearly communicated to you. So, see you next time. Bye for now.